Welcome to another edition of Our City. Here's a few things going around the city of Elizabeth this week. On Wednesday, August 20th at 5 o'clock, I'm going to attend the Greater Elizabeth Chamber of Commerce, their Business After Hours event at the Airport Marriott Hotel, located on uh, Hotel Road in the Newark Airport. On Thursday, August 25th, I'm sorry, Thursday, August 21st, the Circus for Seniors event will be held at the O'Donnell Dempsey Senior Center, located at 622 Salem Avenue. For more information, call 820-4045. And on Friday of this week at 8.30, I'll attend the Dominican Gala Banquet. will be held at Noches de Colombiana Restaurant, located at 545 Bayway Avenue. And on Saturday of this week, the Trinity Christian Center will have their annual Health Fair and Family Day. This event is located at 417 Pennington Street, will feature music, refreshments, face painting, arts and crafts, as well as rides for the children. In addition, there'll be raffles and prizes. There'll be free school supplies and more. The rain date for this event is August 30th. So for more information, call 531-1052. And later that afternoon, we'll have the One Community, One Family Fish Fry which will be held at the Miller Evans Logan Center on 161-163 First Street. And if you're into fish fry, it's a great event to come by. On Sunday, August 24th, I'll join members of the Dominican community as a parade to celebrate the Dominican culture here in our city. The parade will begin at City Hall, at the Winfield Scott Plaza, proceed down Elizabeth Avenue, ending at the Waterfront Marina on Front Street. And immediately following that event, I'll join Councilman William Gallman and members of the community in an afternoon fellowship, praise, and worship event. This will be held at the Charles Holland Skate Park. It will feature choirs, dancers, and much more. So if you need more information concerning these events or any other events, please call our public information office at 820-4124. And please stay with us after this message. Offering everything you could want from college, including a life. Kane University. Welcome back to our city. I'm pleased to be joined by Councilwoman at Large, Patricia Perkins Augusti. Councilwoman, welcome to the show. Thank you, Mayor. It's good to see you again. It's good to be here. How's the summer going? Very nice. Yeah. Very nice summer. This is the fifth year, I'm told, that you've worked on the Book bag giveaway. Yes. We've given away thousands of book bags yes. every year because of your leadership and your ability to make this work. So tell us about this year's event and what exactly is the book bag giveaway? The book bag giveaway is an event, it's a citywide event um, whereby our recreational centers and our senior citizen centers and two community based organizations open up their doors to residents in the community. Um, usually at each event you have anywhere between three to five hundred residents including little children all excited about getting this new book bag um, in the book bag we have a lot of pencil pens all the things that are needed for school and it's about really um, letting everyone know that the summer is about to end um, school is about to start up and we want all our children to be you know school ready when it comes September 1st I'm not so sure they're ever school ready. Huh? <laughs> How about your kids? Are they looking forward to going back? Well, yes, they are because um, my youngest child, he'll be going into the ninth grade, so he's all excited and about that. He's got that. a birthday this week. Yeah, he has a birthday this week. Actually, on the 21st of this month, he'll be 14, so he's um, really looking forward to playing um, football. Um, freshman year at the high school so he's really geared up for that my oldest child will be in 11th grade and he's he loves school so he likes the friends he likes the whole atmosphere so they're ready see i think my daughter who's the same age as your son yes as you know mm -hmm. and uh, they've grown up they even went to school together yes, in preschool. Mm -hmm. so she, her her ability on high school is mm -hmm. all about going back to meet her friends right, right. she's not concerned with reading the books <laughs> i asked her a math question right. during the summer mm -hmm. and she said dad I don't need to do math during the summer, I only need to read. Well, So her focus has to get a little more, but that's what you try to do with this book bag giveaway. Yes, yes, to get the focus back on right track. I mean, school, I mean, to send a child to school without all their 
proper tools, sometimes it diminishes their cap capability of working. And so I want to make sure they have all the tools. Now, we were talking before the show about mm -hmm. what year, I think it's the fifth year? Yes, it is the fifth year. And, and every year we, you've organized it. We've had some guest speakers. Tell us about yes. some of those guest speakers. Some in the of the past. guest speakers, um, it's been one local guy, um, Luther Wright, who made it big, went on to play pro basketball, but you know, had some pitfalls in life, came back and was willing to give back to the community. So, I mean, that's important to let um, the students know and the residents know. Although you may struggle, it's always good to get back up and you can still give something to the community. Um, a couple of times we had Mike Woods, Channel 5, there, you know, he really loves coming to the city of Elizabeth. You know, we treat him real well here. He treats us well in terms of mentioning the book bag and showing pictures on, on Channel 5. So it gets everybody involved. It's, it's a community wide event. So, Councilwoman, tell us about the date and the time of this event and the actual locations. Okay, it's Wednesday, August 27th, and it's from 4 to 6 p.m. And the location starts at, um, in the first ward, we have Miller, Evans, and Logan. In the second ward, we're going to be at Erksleben Community Center. The third ward, um, Elmore Racquet Club on Fernwood. The fourth ward, um, O'Donnell oh, Dempsey. O'Donnell Dempsey Senior Citizen Center, and also the fifth ward, we're going to be at Mickey Walker on Anna Street, and also Jefferson Park Ministries. The sixth ward, Peterstown Community Center, and Oakwood Plaza, which is also yes. in the fourth ward. Thank you so much, Oakwood yeah. Plaza, which is, by the way, um, something going on really good at Oakwood Plaza in terms of renovating those housing, uh, that housing development, making it um, 21st century, and it's it's a nice thing. Yeah, we we spent a lot of time. On yes, that, we did. As you know, and yes. we are making it safer. Yes, We're making safer, it better housing. Better housing. So it's and, um, it's, it's really working. So. Uh, <laughs> Can anyone come to this event? Citywide. It's for any resident who lives in the city of Elizabeth, uh, especially the school-age children. We want all school-age children to be there from the ages of 3 to 17. Um, they're welcome to get a book bag. Um, pizza will be available. We have face painters. We have community-based organizations there for the parents. It's a great event. So tell us about the logistics. It's all from 4 to oh, 6. Yeah. Do you need tickets? And how do we, how do we uh, schedule it? No tickets are needed for the residents. It's just that um, we, meaning you, Mayor, myself, um, the council members, um, recreation, public works, we have to get ready for our community. We have to get ready for the residents to allow them to come in, to provide um, music for them. So it, it's just a nice event. We have nothing to do. Everyone just needs to show up. You've worked on the sponsors as well. Yes. And tell yeah. us about some of those sponsors. Oh, this year we got a lot of local sponsors. We have Elberon Corporation who... Um, who's just a, a, an organization that really loves the city of Elizabeth, does a lot for the city of Elizabeth. We have Ad Atlanta, which is down in the first ward. Um, they become a sponsor. American Water have always been right there with us. Um, Garden State Community Bank, um, the Housing Authority, City of Elizabeth. Um, those are the main sponsors. United Way has jumped into this with us. 7-Eleven um, has always been there. Um, WBLS, the radio station, comes out and really broadcasts this event. Um, we have a lot of sponsors. It's, so, it's, it's a community-wide event. But it's not yeah. only book bags either. No, it's not only just book bags. Tell us about some of the other items. You get rulers, you get pens, we get pencils. Um, sometimes we even have little giveaways from um, Jersey Garden Moore, the outlet collection. They, they, they uh, become involved in this event. Um, Drake College. I'm just trying to think of all the sponsors. It's like they, everyone really participates. And the parents. The parents, there's something for everyone. There's something for the parents. The community-based organizations are going to be available. For example, our, our eHip office, um, United Way is going to be there. I could say Drake College will also provide some type of educational opportunities for our, our young adults. Um, Union County College, our Retail Skills Center, it's going to be there providing information about job opportunities on where can they go and uh, help with help with their resumes. So it's a, it's a good event. Well, you've worked hard on this event, and, and mm -hmm. I, it shows by the number of people yes. that turn out for this event. Mm -hmm. and, and the responses from the families who receive the school book bag and mm -hmm. the school supplies. I mean, the greatest satisfaction I get is mm -hmm. on the first week of school, I see these kids with the book bags. Yeah, right. So tell us about your feedback. My feedback, they, they start crawling in June. 
As soon as school is over, parents, you have people calling saying, okay, when are you going to have your book bag event? Do you have a date? Because it's such a vital thing. Um, you know, we, you know, you and I, you know, see it as just a book bag, but it's more than that to a lot of families. When families are going through um, challenging economic and financial times, they're trying to do a budget and say, okay, where are we going to put our money? Okay, yeah, I know we need school supplies. And sometimes families may wait a week or two after school starts. And perception-wise, that's not good for the young child because when they want to go to school the first day, they want to be fully prepared. And you help them do that, and, and we Councilwoman. Help, yes. I thank you for all of your efforts on getting the kids in Elizabeth ready for the new school year. You're welcome. Appreciate it. I'll see you on August 27th yes. when we do that. Yes, from 4 to 7. Okay. For Councilwoman Patricia Perkins Augusti, please stay with us after these messages where we'll talk with Melissa and Michelle Rodriguez about the dance program in the city of Elizabeth. Mm to our city, where I'm pleased to be joined by Michelle and Melissa Rodriguez. Ladies, welcome to the show. Hello. How are you? You know, we've been doing this dance program now for how many years? Uh, 14. And the two of you have been running the show <laughs> S since you were 10 years old yourself, right? Yeah. No, no, 17. We started when I was 17. Yeah, and this was your idea, right, Michelle? You came to us? Yes, um, it was uh, Larry Lewandowski uh, in the Department of Recreation. Um, I went over there and then we, we had a conversation and they were like, okay. So we started uh, that September and that was in 2000, 2001. And uh, here we are. <laughs> now, Melissa, you love the camera so much, right? Yes. That's why you're <laughs> my favorite part. Your favorite part of this. And, and did you get involved with your sister from the very beginning as yes, well? Yes, when I was 16, she started off and then I would call come and help her. I was still in school. I was still taking dance class at the Myers Dance Studio myself. So I would come whenever I was off and help her out. And did you both take lessons at the same dance studio yes, as girls? Yes, right in Elizabeth. Um, Damaris Dance Studio right there on Elizabeth Avenue. And she's still teaching. Yes. She, she's got a good program, right? <laughs> yes. So tell us about this program and, and how you, you've been in dancing since you were how little? Three. 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 I was five. Five. Mm -hmm. So did like mom say you have to do that? What made you do it? I mean, um, well, my all my cousins were in it. And okay. so my mom was like, OK, so let's start a dance class. So then we just started and we, you know, did all the different shows and activity. And it's a really good uh, way to build relationships. And so we are still like really good friends with a lot of our, our friends growing up in the dance. Um, and so like they still like when we first started off with the dance program, a lot of them would come and help out and would give like, you know, ideas or feedback or whatever so it you know it, it really does help build a sense of, of relationships and bonds so are you Melissa as well friends with a lot of the kids oh yes <laughs> one of my best friends is from the Maris dance school studio she's actually having birth um, she's actually pregnant out with her second child so so Damaris is getting a lot of plugs here <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna have to get her hit her up for a commercial I think, and put her on or something so th this program started off with just I, I always when I go to the graduations say like 20 young girls yeah but it's now in the hundreds right tell yeah. us about well, the right growth now, of this program and where you meet and things like that yeah. right now we have about 200 uh, girls and boys in our dance program not a lot of boys not a lot but we you have, have some we have four. we have four boys four yeah <laughs> <laughs> we have four boys we have one boy who's been with us now for a long time and he's um, good yeah he's good he, and yeah. he loves it um he was saying now he was like um i think i'm getting it i'm like no keep going i was like how great is it you know you're one boy in a classroom filled with girls i'm like you're gonna have your pick for the prom like you know, and they're, <laughs> they're all great. So he's like, all right, all right, all right. So he's going to continue. He's like, as long as it doesn't interfere with hockey, because his class was on Friday, so he was like, it was a bad schedule. But we have 200 girls now um, and, and young, young men in our program, and we meet Mondays through Fridays at the Elmore Racket Club. Uh, right there on Fernwood Terrace, and we have classes every day from about five is our first class till about eight, depending on what the age group is. Um, and then sometimes we'll meet on Saturdays when it gets closer to the show, um, and do like a bunch of different things. So we built the dance studio at the Racket Club because of the work you did. I mean, really, <laughs> right? We didn't have a dance studio, but you have described that dance studio, Melissa, with the bars and the, mir and the mirrors. Well, and we're everything. actually getting our new floors renovated right. as, as we speak. Um, it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. We first started off at the old Racket Club, but now. They remodeled it. We have mirrors and walls. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful colors. It's really good atmosphere for the and, and when you work with the with the young children, what's the greatest part of the success when they not not at the recital, right? It's the growth during the time. Right. It's from September how they change from they get so much more comfortable with us and towards June it's like Hey, Miss Melissa, help me with homework. Hey. <laughs> so you're more than just a dance teacher. Right. Yeah. 
We have. Can them. you can you do homework? I mean, I because I know I struggle with my <laughs> homework. I'm during during intermittent during our break time, that I can't. Um, their parents sometimes don't you know speak English that often, so they come and ask us to translate mm -hmm. a question or. Hey. So the both of you speak Spanish. Right. Yes. Right. And that, that helps a lot too. Yeah. So t how do you recruit the students? I mean, do they just come to you or is there um, there's word usually, of mouth? Word of mouth, Department of Recreation always has all of our information of when we start and all of our, our dates for all of our shows and all of our events. Um, so they can contact the Department of Recreation, uh, but mostly just word of mouth and it gets goes around and, and we just keep growing. <laughs> now, now, you're not the only two, your mom's part of this? She comes oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, Tell we, us about it. Mean, did you drag event. mom by her hair and say it's, you got to help? It's a family event. We also have Miss Daniela. Yes. She's also uh, one of the. She was in our program uh, from when she was. Hey, tell us about Daniela. Yeah. She came through the program. Yes, she yeah. came through the program since she was nine, and uh, she, you know, she finished high school. Now she's uh, going to Kane, right, uh, Kane University, and she's going to become math teacher. And so she, she goes. Her mom goes. Her dad goes. Her yeah. brother goes. My mom goes. My dad goes. Cousins, you know, <laughs> um, we recruit everybody. <laughs> So you have a little bit of help wherever you are. Oh, oh, we, Curtain girl. we always take help. We're like, oh, what are you doing? No, oh, let's go. And let's go. And then so we're always looking for volunteers and help. And, and now, did your mom dance when she was a young girl or no? She didn't, um, but she knows all the dances. And she, oh, my God. <laughs> she knows all the stuff. Now, when I was growing up and you went to a dance school, which I never did, but my sister did, it was strictly tap and ballet. That was what you learned. Mm -hmm. But I've been to some of your classes and watched the girls dance as well as the recitals. Mm -hmm. You do much more. Yeah, we uh, we teach ballet, tap, flamenco. Those are our three main classes. But then we have lyrical. We have like a modern, contemporary class, um, and so they have like a bunch of different options. Uh, if they're interested in, in something or if a class is really like we're doing a tap number, but the class seems to be really interested in hip hop, oh, so we try to collaborate the group's interests as well with the class that we're currently teaching. Melissa, do you have a favorite to teach or a favorite to um, to participate in, I say, as a teacher? I like to incorporate lyrical, so it's like a mixture of ballet and a little modern, more involved. Well, so. as a guy that doesn't have two left feet, tell, <laughs> tell us what is lyrical dance? Um, it's a modern version of ballet. Ballet is obviously um, the basics, and you have to know ballet to basically dance any of the dances. However, it's more, you could put songs with lyrics in it, it's more less classical than ballet. And so you said something interesting. Ballet is the standard, you said. Or right. Other steps are taken off of ballet. So I guess they learn the rudimentary facts of ballet. Yes. That's ballet is the root of everything. If you're good at ballet, then you pretty much could learn anything. You could do anything. <laughs> right. So is that, one, is that your favorite? Yes. yes. <laughs> it is. Ballet is my favorite. Um, I, I teach right now the oldest girls uh, their ballet class. Um, and... So it's it's just like the foundation, um, you know. Some girls really enjoy ballet; others necessarily don't enjoy ballet as much, which is fine. Um, a lot of them are a lot more like acrobatics, and there's like a lot of acro dances now that are happening, which involves more of gymnastics kind of approach with dance and a nice little mixture. Um, so it all depends on kind of what each person's interest is and their strengths are, and then developing it. So besides Daniela, who we know has come back and has been part of the program now as a teacher, are there other young ladies who have grown into women who are now coming back to say, hey, I remember you, or... Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What, we, what we, kind of reaction did you get Before Miss, Miss Daniela, we had Miss Melanie. Um, she oh, was, Melanie, I Yes, she yeah. also worked in our program. She also went through our program uh, from the time she was young till you know, now, and now she's going to uh, New York City University and studying to become a social worker. Um, so she's, you know, she's she comes back. She was there for the recital, helped us out. Uh, we have a lot of students. Uh, we have another student right now that graduated last year. She's going Northeastern. Um, and they always come back, especially during recital time. And they're like, hey, you know, you do you need any help? And, and they have sisters that are still in the program. And, you know, we attend a lot of Sweet 15s and oh a lot of different graduation parties. And when they graduate from high school, then when they graduate from college, we really try to keep in contact with them. Um, so even though they finish our program, we try to make sure that they, you know, they know they're always, uh, there's always a place for them there. And they're always welcome to come back and, and kind of hang out with us. So 
it must be fun seeing and, and hearing their stories about Northeast and NYU. Oh yes, yeah. you know it's and, it's great and it's uh, it's nice to see, well, especially when you've known them since they were little, and you see how they start to grow and, and start growing into like their personalities and themselves. And you have like a little girl who who when she was seven and started <laughs> was really quiet and shy and barely spoke, and now she's you know in high school and talking about boys and school <laughs> and like you know it, it's it's a really so what's nice the age group of the uh, classes? Our Michelle? youngest is three. Um, and potty trains. <laughs> <laughs> that's a rule. Uh, yes. That's a rule, right? Yeah. Three and potty trains, and our oldest is 17. However, we have like a 12 age, we have like a trial for ages 12 and up, see if they could incorporate with our good environment and keep our environment as positive as we can. Do you break the classes down according to age, or do you break it down according to how they progress talent-wise? It's according to age level. However, sometimes we um, incorporate, if there's a large class, we incorporate two dances according to their skills and age. And what's the most fun, the younger kids or the 17-year-olds? Or the, uh, Every group has its has its positives and its <laughs> negatives. The younger ones are always cute. They're always fun. Uh, you know, there's always like something interesting going on with them. Uh, but the older girls is is kind of my personal uh, favorite because I feel that that's where you really get to um, build more of impacting right. relationships. What about the parents? Oh, parents. <laughs> <laughs> they I get intimidated, but they have grown to we have grown to work with each other. They're very involved and they they try their best to to help us with the program. We have some parents with my Spanish sometimes I translate and we have parents like, Okay, she really meant this. They helped me translate my, my broken Spanish. So we all work together and they're a really great bunch of parents. I wanna thank you for taking the time to join us on the show and especially for all the work you've done for the young ladies and some young men mm -hmm. in the city of Elizabeth and teaching them dance. It's a great program. Thank I enjoy it. Thanks for Thank coming you on the so show. Thank you so much. For Melissa Rodriguez and Michelle Rodriguez, and for Councilwoman Patricia Perkins Augusti on the earlier part of the show, I'm Chris Bolwage, and we'll see you next week on another edition of Our City. We're creating tomorrow's jobs today. Kane University.